this is technically a making post-mortem. Uh, going over the third episode, which is short. It's 36 minutes long. And uh, this for the Transformer. You can put this making of on the next one if you want to, because this technically leads into the thing. Um, yeah, there are three scenes, specifically that, short scenes, that need to be done, because there are three continuity errors, one in each act. Uh, the first continuity error occurs in, and you're going to see it in the script here. Okay, in Act 1, Rekgar claims the comms have taken the bridge. Then it's never mentioned again. Now, Landmine and Slipstream happen to have almost no lines, or they're almost not in it. So, here's my idea. <laughs> A brief scene between two and four minutes. Landmine and Slipstream are going to the bridge, and they realize the cons are going to go onto the bridge. But they think they are, and they close the door or shut something down that enables Rekgar to take the bridge back in the next scene. Then, before the scene where he talks to Pound Punch on the view screen, it seems like it's fine that he has control again. And this is because Landmine reports to Rekgar just before the punch scene and says, oh, they, they didn't get on the bridge, they, they left. They didn't find what they were looking for and they left. Uh, we trapped them outside the bridge. So, something like that. So, so yeah, you don't need to show them, just they, they left. Uh, and Galvatron and Megatron don't know where the, the ship is. They, they, they do know where the Autobots are, but they don't know where the ship is, so they, they're tracking them. Um, in Act 2, Megatron met briefly with Slipstream on the screen. He realized she is on the Autobot ship. So there's no scene like that in here, but there needs to be, because Galvatron approaches, and this is kind of a mistake, an error, a continuity thing that we did. Or I did. Uh, it wasn't in the script. Uh, but there was a similar battle scene that illustrated it in the script. Went back and read there was a battle scene that isn't going to happen. So the idea is that why did the why did, uh, second Galvatron leave? It's because Megatron ordered him to. And let the other Decepticons handle it. So a line like 30 seconds or something. Just a little uh, a line in there. Him saying, oh, report back to the bridge. Yeah, let the, let the, let um, ex Lava deal with it. Uh, so that's, and then, yeah, he, he doesn't want to, so the idea is that he doesn't want to get to the kill of the, of the uh, Rodimus Prime or whatever. He wants to see what they're going to do, basically. He doesn't want to bother, be bothered with killing them. <laughs> so that makes that scene even more messed up, because then, like, okay, he, there's going to be a, a battle scene. That, that's funny. Um. So yeah, do that, because that's that's fucked up. Okay, so then in Act 3, about a minute scene, we need a scene that explains why Prime just decides, oh, Rekgar's trapped on, on the station. I mean, the, the, the twins turned the upper hand and took the station. Why, why, why is that going on? Why, why did he just uh, not mention it much to the crew? Well, he mentioned it to Landline before he goes to talk to the crew about the engines. He goes... He goes in and he says uh, something to the effect that Rekgar is their spy that they've sent over to the, to the ship. <laughs> and, and Landmine could make a quirky comeback to the effect that that he's uh, that uh, why would you do that? It's like, it's Rekgar. He might mess it up. And he's like, it was like something to the effect of, well, Rekgar wouldn't because he's simplistic and he would... Uh, it is already a little simple-minded. So, yeah. It, yeah, they wouldn't be able to figure out Rekar's brain. Uh, he's just he's just wired differently. So, it's kind of funny. Yeah, so those two, those three scenes, that's what we're going to shoot. <laughs> yeah. B-roll. About 7. Uh, the 7th of uh, April. I might have said March earlier. This April, I meant April. Um, yeah. Uh, but, uh, episode 4. Uh, yeah, and uh, it appears that Grotesque and uh, Rekgar are no or Grotesque in the script, but Rekgar and and uh, <laughs> and Pounce and Punch are no longer in the movie, but that but that later on the uh, possessed uh, battleship slash Galvatron uh, Maxis Carta thing does happen again, 
so that's a little after the prime lecture which is coming up uh, and then he shows up again at the very end and well we can put them in there somewhere we can just have but not very long because we want the story to be the, the length of the script uh, and have them and have them establish that they they're not dead they've been rescued they're going to be rescued and there's hope of some kind maybe he signals them on the screen or something they appear but that's later um, so now we're on to the planet Cybertron slightly redress of the bridge set and it doesn't matter if the bridge set looks different next time we see it because in book five because I don't think there's any more footage on the bridge in book four uh, book five they've, they've done some repairs so book five they're on Cybertron more so we are going to leave the bridge set. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, this is an Autobot ship of footage. No, no, this is uh, the, that weird, trippy, ethereal world where uh, he's kind of inside the Matrix, kind of in his own spark pur purgatory. I think so. Uh, continuing with that. Although I do have the I do have the headmaster guy for this shot, but not the right scale. So it's going to be Vector Prime. But he's still Vector Sigma Prime, so still works. Uh, this is going to be the return of Vector Sigma Alpha Trion uh, phoned in. And uh, he's in the story in this sort of pseudo-dream sequence purgatory uh, that's going to send Rodimus uh, Unicronus or Maxis Carta to uh, to kind of possess uh, Galvatron and um, which is kind of messed up it wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be godly of him but he's an alien robot so and they have spark hearts that like their physical soul is like an energy being of some kind similar to the Invid and they, the spark and his spark is going into the, I guess it's gone into the Matrix Mort uh, the dead Matrix that would be inside this uh, dark version of Rodimus Prime um, uh, and, uh, so, yeah, the, um, this is sort of a, a surreal sequence in Purgatory. And it's kind of explained in the story what's, what's going on anyway, so, in the, in the dialogue. Don't want to change it up too much. Um, yeah. Let's, let's, uh, let's go. So, okay, making of. I don't want to have him jump from the script and do extra things and do anything extra. I want to keep to the script, so... So this scene ends right here. Uh, there's not going to be any extra exposition about what's going on. He's having, he, it's explained, he's having a sort of a dream, a vision. He's, he's a spark, and this is what he's seeing in his mind. So yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a disembodied uh, like energy being at this point, floating around and connected to a Decepticon. So yeah, not going to add anything. So, there. <laughs> oh yeah, so this is... Uh, yeah, I just thought I would mention that Beast Box was killed when he blew up the other guy on the Autobot ship. So this is not Beast Box, because Beast Box and the other guy are, are totally dead. So I said they blew, the, they blew up on the ship. So this is somebody, another one of them, probably Rumble or one of the other guys. Um, one of the other Minicons. Um, yeah, so, but it's ridiculous that he tells Beast Box... Uh, that that, uh, that Beast Box tells him that he's going to beat him up. He can't. He's way smaller than the Autobot. So it makes more sense for the big guy to say it. Just just visually, it makes more sense. Uh, but then he remarks to the little guy that he's going he's gonna to blast. Him. Or maybe he's belittling the bigger one. But yeah, it's between... In other words, it's between him, really, and him. Vice returns, uh, or someone like Vice is supposed to be. I don't think Vice died. I think Starscream died. Vice escaped. That's what happened. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Note that we cut out a love scene in here from the original draft. Uh, we showed the love scene earlier, and it's weird because there's no transition to it anyway. And then he starts talking about asexual reproduction and budding and weird, like stuff that's very fanfic -y. but it's not true of Transformers necessarily. I don't even know why they would really have gender technically is that Lizzie Ellis pointed that that to me um critic pointed out. Yeah. Yeah yeah I hoping that other guy wasn't turned around during some of that shot. But I probably not. 
check the dailies. Uh, yeah, this tape is up. So that was uh, tonight's filming. It's about 10, 9.40. So. And uh, yeah, so we did a whole day, whole whole freaking day of uh, uh, filming on, on episode four because it was that cool. So yeah. Mm. A, lot, a lot going on. Might be longer than episode three, which was a little short. This might be up to 45, 50 minutes roughly. So, okay, now, now it works. Okay, now I'm in the frame. So, I'm on the set of uh, Corrosion of War Without End, Episode 4. Finish 3, going on right to 4, because we're set, set up. Uh, this is um, the Autobots a couple weeks later in the story, having assembled, um, it's about three weeks to a month later. Well, they've assembled, uh, the, they've repaired the ship enough to get to Cybertron, try the full generator. So, that's all, yeah, we're just going to go on to do that, um, the, uh, Rec R and Punch are still captured, um, it, uh, yeah, and it just rendered episode three online today, so, so, yeah, and the other making of footage from up, uh, reshoots, uh, you can add that to this, because it, well, we already did making of for the other. <laughs> anyway, so that's this. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna go go on with it. So what's going on here is in the script they rescued the two Autobots from the shuttle, but there's no way that Rekar and the other guy got off the ship. Other if that happens, how did they did they get another ship? But if Slagmaker survives, they have a ride off the planet to Cybertron. So Slagmaker in this version survives so <laughs> here's what they're gonna do um <laughs> it's because otherwise they just left them there and you know things are bad yeah and these two guys are not central to the rest of the story so they stayed behind so yeah so that's what's gonna happen they're gonna go rescue okay that that makes it clearer the story it makes it visually more interesting target two has cleared the stick maker tongue tank go Looks like your car we could go with the target one coming over the pal okay, okay. Well oh, incidentally, the story's supposed to take place five hundred years after Unicron trilogy. But it's inconsistent because earlier other times they say it's not. Anyway, so going on to this. Um <clears throat> yeah. I guess that's making it. this is actually gonna be twenty twenty. Yeah. In this scene we are skipping ahead. I didn't do any making of yet. Uh, this is not really a making of. This is to note that we're skipping to the scene where it's in his mind. He's, he's seeing this uh, thing in his mind, uh, this uh, battle between Terminus and Whirl and the Decepticons, and and he's in it. So we're gonna. So that's what's going on. Um, and it's page one eighty nine, and it's it is it's when he wakes up. So we're gonna. Because he's, we don't want to tear down the sick base set, change it over, and then have to tear it down again. So, just gonna go on ahead to this page and show this sick base scene. So yeah, so yeah. <clears throat> I will do a little making of thing here. I I wanted to do all of the footage that's in the sick bay. And and because it's kind of an elaborate looking set, also I thought the uh, that, that that the dream battle that's going on would be cool if it was in the sick bay, going on. So it's like Prime isn't really in the sick bay; he's just imagining his sort of dreaming like stuff that's going on. It's, it totally makes sense. It's it's just cool. It's really cool. And of course, the Vector Prime scene is added, but that's to convey to the audience something that's kind of or it's in the script. Actually, it's someone else. So one of the other Transformers comes back. The brother talks to him and stuff. I thought, what? what eh, the brother thing is... It's not. <laughs> nah, it doesn't work. So I figured, well, I had that other guy. Uh, the, and they're near Cybertron, and they address that Vector Prime thing and the whole the whole budding and, and near Primus and all that. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool? Is instead of being the brother, it literally is a manifestation of, of Vector Prime. Of Vector... Vector Sigma Prime shows up, and he's literally there in front of him because he's close to Cybertron. 
It's kind of cool. Uh, also, there's a slight biblical reference in there. The one in 99 is the uh, the uh, parable of the lost sheep, where the lost sheep is missing, and they have to go out looking for just that lost sheep to bring it back. I'll throw that in there. Which was also in Secret Life of Pets, part two. <laughs> and a number of other things. I thought I'd just throw that little little parable in there. It's sort of a you know, what I thought, like a quadrupedal cloven uh, furred, furred cr mammal. <laughs> yes, a sheep. <laughs> I thought that would be cool just to throw that in there. So, yeah, the, the scene's going to be funny. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I take it Cybertron is in the solar system in this story. It's probably still messing up messing up the Earth and the orbit of between Earth and Mars from uh, TransTech. That's, it's, it's nearby, so... Uh, yeah, and which is also in the Transformers movies, the live action ones, because they brought it near the moon. It's sort of still there. It hasn't been removed. It's still there. So yeah, so it's it's canon with TransTech. Michael Bay's Transformers is weirdly canon with TransTech, which is yeah okay. Um, sure. Now we're gonna go back and do the Night Racer interrogation. Well, it's not an interrogation. It's a meeting in the secret base, and there I've changed something too. Rewind might be there, but it's mainly Blaster. Because that makes more sense. <laughs> Q scene that is later. Page 183. Same interrogation room. Indicating it's after the Maxis Carta and Galvatron scene. I want to film all the interrogation room scenes. This being the last 13 minutes of the story. So why not? Also a brief note. That note in the script. That Rewind is the character in the script. But I felt Blaster should be him. Just because... It makes more sense that it's Blaster. Because then, then yeah. Tape Guy is kind of hard to film. Just like a little disc bot over there. He's there. He's, he's a little disc bot. But, uh, yeah, he's not. <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 not, they're a weird scale. They're all like. The, these, these Generation Prime guys and this slightly bigger Generation Blaster and Night Racers, almost a Minicon compared to them. So, yeah, she's, she's practically a Minicon. And they're, and they're small Autobots. They're not big. So the scale is weird. So we have to like monkey with the scale. Of course, the G1 one's worse. Blaster in G1 was like way taller than like Jetfire. Because the technology back then was clunky. And that Prime is roughly the same size as the original Optimus Prime toy. It's not very tall. And the one from the other stories out there. Anyway, so. Yeah. So this scene is going to be a little long-winded and not visually interesting. So, so, so what? Point out the, uh, this isn't really a making of, well, I guess this little bit is. We can introduce Nightbeat, but apparently the, the, his, Mr. Powers' is penchant for trying to be clever. Des Desiccator AOL class. Tells you that this was done in 98 originally when AOL, online, America Online, big deal. Yeah, it's like an arcane computer reference from the late 1990s. What the hell? Clang! <laughs> also, you might want to note the script. Maybe you're not going to be able to read the script. That this is the same dialogue. I'm just making it more kinetic. Um, that there was going to be a scene change and that they were going to move... Air Flight and Prime, or Moon Racer and Prime have them talking together for like a page. And I thought it more interesting to have them continue in the same room only because why would they just leave the room just to like go over their historical data? I mean, have them in the same room. I forget closer. How things change. Okay, let's, let's do this. Okay, it is April the 9th. What's uh, what's going on today is uh, we've put all the movie in the can, but have not assembled it yet. Um, the uh, but we already know ahead of time that we kind of do need that Galvatron scene in which he flips out the bridge of a ship somewhere, and that we need to get Rekgar and his friends to the Autobots at the same time. So, so. That scene doesn't really have any dialogue in the script. It's just him flipping out, like, "Oh, what's going on with me? Oh, I'm or something's wrong." Uh, and then there's the them that have been captured. Uh, the uh, the Vengeance is a ship that's mentioned a few times, and it's uh, but was a stolen Autobot ship. 
Uh, that's his ship, apparently. Um, and he has, uh, uh, this, this scene is going to be uh, him having captured the slag maker and is dragging it to Cybertron because he's going nuts. <laughs> and, uh, and although we have not introduced Alicom yet, she's in the background. Uh, to, to, uh, yeah, she's not the other guy. Um, she's wondering why. So we're going to kind of introduce her because then, it, then there's, he doesn't have a crew otherwise. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he's, he's a relatively unmanned ship out here. Uh, going after the other thing. Megatron doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, you know, he doesn't keep tabs on his on his twin, necessarily. Um, probably doesn't care, because the Megatron in this version is, is kind of psycho. <laughs> he's just like, um, but yeah, uh, but yeah, they're, they're, they would have to be halfway there or more. I'm thinking this scene, actually, with the ship occurs before the Autobots start talking about the different ships so that the person in the audience watching this knows that the ship is called Vengeance, but not its connection to the other stuff. When they get to it, then they're like, oh, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, it all fits together nicely. So We need to get him back to Cybertron. We need to explain how. He couldn't have gotten out of that gigantic space fleet. And now we're going to kind of explain what happened. So they're on their way to Cybertron. They're... If they're they're jumping over there and they're gonna because they captured them and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah so their, their little adventure that they're referring to this is part of the end of that we don't need to show the whole thing so they're not fighting anybody they're just heading there making of, of a little bit making of a little bit uh, yeah although there isn't a scene with the other primes saying these sort of lines the other two kind of said it in the other version of the script with the all one race thing and the motivation of the, which I changed slightly, moved around a little bit because it fit more if someone else says the things that I know that the two prisoners were somebody else. They were like rewind and eject or something, but I changed that. So now it's these two guys that are the prisoners. So it is in the script. It's just in a different place, two different guys to make it more visually interesting and stuff. Cause normally, uh, because the idea of them just uh, spouting off ship names and all the ships that were destroyed on the bridge is a funny scene, but ultimately kind of long. So you want to make that more or a lot more or less a reveal kind of thing. It's like a slow burn. It's not a linorama. It's more of a slow burn kind of thing. Um, this episode doesn't have a lot of space battles. But, so this episode, like uh, some of the other... I think the first one was like this. Uh, yeah, we wanted to have it less... Um, it is a story, trying to tell a story about Transformers and what they're doing. Also, it conveniently brings this Optimus Prime closer to interacting with the Optimus Primes and Cybertron. If they're actually on their way, so they can, so logistically, they can hail him and he'd be like, oh, I'm almost there. You know? And that's what's going to happen in the very next scene. We don't need to change. Well, actually, I'm going to do some of the I'm going to do some of uh, just some still stuff of some of the other Optimus Prime talking to some of the other Autobots because he mentioned he did. And uh, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to cut to I'm getting contacted, uh, contacting Prime so he knows the ship is on the way. He just doesn't know where the ship is yet. So, yeah, okay. So. Okay, well, that's the pickup scene, sort of not pickup scenes. Technically not pickup scenes because we knew they had to be in there. So they weren't like, oh, we forgot about them. We haven't rendered the whole thing yet. So technically not pickup scenes, just another half day of shooting. That's all. So, yeah, I think I think it's all in the can. I think it's all there. Um, let's, uh, let's, yeah, let's put it together. Mm. Corrosion of War Without End, Episode 4. Uh, very tight script. Uh, good. Uh, in fact, there's not going to be much making. Uh, so yeah, uh, there, there, there you go. Part four. Yeah, by now they ought to be pretty much, you know, gel what they what they are. <laughs> and the new ones uh, flowed really well into the story with it. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, yeah. So, yeah. I don't need to necessarily go on. 
about any of what's going on other than, yeah, the, the uh, two slash scenes are in it. Um, originally, Night Racer was someone else. Originally, it was a dude, and there was, it, was a, it was a gay thing. But, uh, but in this version, kind of imply they, the other two or three of them are like that. But then they have the line where they say, like, their, their gender thing doesn't mean anything. It's a more recent thing, copying the humans. From, from having contact with humans, and and technically it shouldn't matter at all that they have gender because they don't reproduce that way, which is interesting to have them say that in there, because that's not technically in the script, but kind of should have been. But it was written in 1998. They're still homophobic back then, so we have changed that a little bit. And also, we did include I did include the uh, the night racer scene near the end there, uh, which would have been a guy and a girl originally, but no, no, in this one it's it's, it's Two chicks. But they aren't with the other Autobots, like, putting on a show, because that's not what lesbians do. They would be by themselves doing that. The ones that are putting on a show are putting on a show. That They do have those kind of people. I have encountered people that put on a show. They've been gay or straight or bi or what. And they're putting on a show out in public. But, uh, yeah, they don't need to do that in public. And if you want to, fine. Show affection out in public. But, yeah. It's, it's it's the new millennium, so why not? But but yeah, the ones that are putting on a show are, are trying to get attention. The ones that aren't are, aren't. It's very uh, woke. <laughs> it's very SJW. Uh, yeah, the story is, is uh, it'll 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 trigger the uh, people that don't like that. It'll be funny. Like oh, your transformer thing has homos. It's twenty twenty. It's slash fiction. It's the mush website is. Chocked full of that stuff. It's 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 sort of it, I've made a we've made a story where you know it's a, it's a slashy shipping story. They call it shipping now, it's a slash story, where they've made it about transformers and built up this whole backstory and thing. I'm thinking this. I think this author is probably actually a, a woman that uh, put all this detail in there before the slash scene even happens. The slash scene is almost nothing in the story. It's made of this build-up. If it was Guy had written it, every character would be in love with each other, and they would be all like that. <laughs> but it's like, no, no, and they would be showing off. If it was a guy. That wrote it. I don't think, I don't know if Alex or Powers is either, is, is, is uh, probably either a extremely, if, I don't know, I don't know if he's a dude or a chick, but if it is a dude, then he's a dude that's, has the t has known women or has a tendency to be effeminate or I don't know I don't know um I clear from the story you know, a lot of thought about dialogue characters and stuff it probably is a, a girl that wrote it um <laughs> uh uh but yeah maybe not I mean maybe if she's extremely uh, in tune with it man maybe um that 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 you know tune with women kind of thing. Or maybe it's a transsexual. Maybe the guy became a. I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Um, but uh, but it would be kind of interesting because the the gender stuff is in the script, but it's not. It's not a deal breaker. It's supposed to be in the script. Uh, we, we yeah yeah we have the, the two love scenes are in there. Um yeah um but yeah they're uh, but yeah so I don't even think it's PG thirteen really though because it's it's just. They're plastic toys, and they're not actually doing anything erotic. So, except ooh, they're they're embracing. So really, it's still PG thirteen. It's it's not anything. They're robots. I didn't put plastic dildos on them or anything. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so that's the end of episode four. Uh, so so uh, yeah, this is not for kids, obviously. Yeah, don't don't let kids don't watch it. I'm just. <laughs> And B-roll, finishing up last scenes in the film. Uh, note that we're going to have to address the race relations, gender relations scene right after this. Uh, here we go. Uh, this is going to be page 194. And they're still going over in alphabetical order, apparently, all these ships, of course, in the script, just to be weird. And that's what this is. Actually, before I leave this, I want to address him more directly um, in terms of what he said to Night Racer earlier. I want him to say it to Prime and Night Racer again, just to have him say it to him. Like, 
to him as well because he's the commander guy. Yeah, so mm -hmm. this isn't the end. Instead of having the weird Galvatron scene in the middle where it's out of place, it's going to be moved to the end of the story. And and um, and slightly different than in the script, only because it's punchier that way. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, we're gonna end the scene right here. And it's gonna be slightly different than in the script, but it's more visually punchy because they've been a lot of talking of ships and stuff. Okay, principal photography has just wrapped on book four of corrosion of war that end. So. Um, yeah, let's, uh, yeah, we had a four-day shoot, and, uh, we filmed, uh, roughly 14 pages a day, and we finished with 30 pages of it, and then the, the additional for, uh, 15 today, so, yeah, uh, roughly. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, all we have to do is put it in the can and put it together, and there might be pickups, who knows? Hopefully not. Um, yeah, so, that means we're over halfway through the Corrosion series of War of That End. After, as of uh, book four, we would pass the halfway mark and go in a little bit into the next one. Mm. And it should be about the same length as book three, roughly. Um, yeah, there's nothing really extra. Not as many battles. Um, it's mostly a psychological sort of court drama thing. Which is kind of fun. Um, um, uh, with the council and stuff. Uh, different, more subdued kind of thing. I mean, there was a space battle at the very end. A very exciting opening 15 minutes. And then it slows down for the courtroom thing. And then it goes into that and some of that stuff. A little slash fiction happens. And, uh, yeah, and they, and they left it open. In the original script, they left it open. What happened to Rekgar? Or then in the script called Grove Tusk. And what happened to a uh, punch and counter punch, but they didn't address it again for like three books or something. They left it out, so I thought I'm gonna address it. I'm gonna put them on the end, add that little end scene, that little end scene with the, the other guy in the Galvatron, even though I think it was a uh, dredge or something else, and he was supposed to be at Cybertron at this point. So it is consistent with the script. It is in the script. I just made it a different guy and gave him slightly different lines to fit the. It was just, what has he done? What what is he doing? This kind of thing, um, to be a little more on point. Because when you film a turn of book into a visual medium, you kind of change some things around to make them fit a little better. The slash scene was actually in the script. So, <laughs> and also also we uh, we address that uh, with the fan theory of of, of Night Racer and uh, and later Windblade. The fan theory is completely. Uh, said in this version. Yes, they are. They don't like boys. They are lesbian robots. Um, <laughs> which is kind of a little bit hinted at, but now in this episode they, they reveal that. But it's 2020, so it's the future. So They're woke. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, but they don't do any anything unusual. It's it's the two, the uh, bird bot and sure shot that are the ones that, that uh, copulate well, robo copulate, clang, 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 but but it's yeah, it's still PG thirteen at most because you don't just see anything really, so it's all right. Anyway, uh, anyway, so that's uh, making footage, and there isn't much, but uh, yeah, this book four was very tight, the script was very tight. Yeah, but there'll probably be a lot of post production uh, adjustment of the scenes where it's static. We zoom in a little better with a zoom in tool in post because there was a lot of dialogue that had to be set up, set static because it would have been way too hard to say it. So that's it. That's uh, that's book four. Uh, yeah, it's done. So. Uh, to be honest, I'm not quite sure. My orders are to investigate and verify the nature and intention of your vessel. Whatever that may mean. You look like Autobots to me, but I don't... But I doubt that just saying that would compromise a sufficient report to Cybertron's official. Well, <laughs> I'll have a look up at it. No, don't fall over. <laughs> Stop that. Stop. Stop 
stop, 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 get out of there, get out of there. Oh yeah, this is April 8th, and rolling, I am truly, oh, I think that's half hour. Terminus. Terminus, no. <sighs> okay. The camera's literally right in his face. So, um. Timer! Okay, let's try this. It's exactly the same height as that. No, don't go yet. Actually, ah, uh, uh, it's like he doesn't know anything anymore. We must. What? I don't understand. 